I'm Allison, and this is my dog, and we live in a tiny house, in an even tinier trailer, traveling the country, taking hikes, and I'm sure glad to have you back this week to ride passenger on my 6,000 mile road trip through the American West. Last time, we spent three days trying to outdrive the snow while finding something to do in the four states we had to cross. We were not really all that successful. This time, though, we finally find some vitamin D and cacti. And we're back in the car. Monument Valley, two and a half hours. Okay. Nobody waves at other Jeeps in Moab because there's so many of them. Oh, I got a wave there. Now, in case you missed it last week, I was dreaming of hiking and driving the different state and national parks that are all within one hour of Moab. But snow caught up with us and ruined any chance of enjoying the wilderness without risking my life. But that's okay, since I've spent plenty of time there in 2021. So now we're headed toward Monument Valley to take in the legendary scenery. That scenery, though, is only accessible during golden hour by booking a private tour to the most protected areas of the park. And I have to be there by 2 p.m. to check in. She will not be there on time. I may not have made it to the park gates on time because I got distracted by the beauty on the way, actually. So here it is as I am entering the park that I continue my series of two tight turnarounds I suggest you don't attempt in your tiny trailer. First, I see the park entrance is backed up for quite a while. I quickly forget the road is surrounded by deep sand and pull over. Then I change my mind as soon as my tires and reality start to sink in. Point to me on that one though, thanks to four-wheel drive. Then it turns out that the park is at capacity and they aren't letting anyone in. So rather than wait around a few hours just to get into the park only to find a place to turn this crazy train around, and since we already missed our tour, I pulled this one out of my hat. Well, maybe next time Monument Valley, but we have bigger plans. morning. We have a two hour drive until we get to Saguaro National Park. And after four days on the road of crap weather, canceled plans, my mental health is an absolute dumpster fire. One nice thing I have to say about today is it's almost 50 degrees and it's 830 in the morning. I am without parka today for the first time in months. I don't know and I'm gonna do my best I can to enjoy it, frazzled and crazy as I feel today. Oh my gosh, there's gardeners out and about. Everyone's lawn looks fantastic. <laughs> you know you're in a big town when you see the Ikea. For anyone who hasn't seen my tiny house tour, which is my first video ever, by the way, or if you just know me personally, you know that I have a small obsession with cacti. Okay, well, maybe a big obsession. Anyway, I've been to Arizona a couple times in the last year, and somehow I've never been able to make it to Saguaro National Park, which is one of my holy grails, bucket list trips, whatever you want to call it, for cactus hunting. This trip was all to get some sun and see some cacti. And finally, finally, we found what we were looking for.
know, all the signs say trailers over 35 feet are prohibited and there's no place to put them or park them back here. My truck and trailer are under 35 feet and I would also not recommend driving back here. <laughs> Even if you've got a tiny trailer, tinier than mine even, don't drive it back here. <laughs> There's no place to turn it around. There's no place to park it. It's certain jackknifing doom, I think. I'm real glad I left my trailer back at the visitor center. So I spent the rest of the day exploring the western district of the park and the adjacent Tucson Mountain Park before picking the trailer up at the visitor center, checking into the hotel, and heading to the eastern district to enjoy every last drop of light I had. Yes, Saguaro National Park is actually in two different places, one district to the northwest and one district to the southwest of the city of Tucson. They're about a 45 minute drive apart, and if you're headed to the eastern district, the Pima Air and Space Museum and Airplane Boneyard next door are not to be missed if you're a history or aviation buff. Now that we've scoped out both districts of the park, we're coming back tomorrow to close out the year right. That is, if the rain lets up. Suddenly got very wet out. We are eating Denny's in the car for breakfast this morning. Sometimes your hotel doesn't serve breakfast. Cheers, happy new year. There is one car here, just one, probably because it's raining. I'm just going to eat my breakfast now and hope the rain lets up. And the rain did let up, actually. This day and this hike turned out so spectacularly. I'm going to save those stories for next time to give my cactus pals the love they truly deserve. And I do really love cacti. So it took us only six days of endless gas station stops, about 25 bad cups of coffee, and maybe questioning my sanity just a little to make it to this mecca of prickly companions. And as you'll see next time, it was so worth the drive. find a car wash while I'm at it. I think we've officially outrun the snow and the mud. I think it's maybe safe to wash the car in the trailer.